So what I would like to spend some time working on is going back and let's just cover some really core, I don't want to say basic, these are core fundamental concepts we really need to grasp before we can move on. We're going to start, for some of you this may be really boring, which means you can really help out, okay? But we are going to start back at some of these premises we've covered in the past couple weeks. The chart of accounts is a list of all accounts that we will categorize transactions to. And we know that they consist of assets, liabilities, stockholders' equity, revenues, or expenses, right? That's how they're broken down. Let's talk about some asset accounts. So, guys, I did this and left it blank for you because I'm, the way I learn, not this is how everyone learns, I need to hear it, see it, but that writing it really helps me. How many of you guys experience that? I need to write it for it to help sink in. That's why I left it blank. Let's talk about some asset accounts. What is one? Let's just call them out. Cash, Cash is a huge asset account. What else? Accounts receivable. Supplies. Not supplies expense, though. Supplies. What else? Equipment. Prepaid rent not rent expense. Prepaid rent is an asset because it's going to provide us with a future benefit. What else? Land, buildings, what? I didn't hear you, sweetie. Okay. What else? Prepaid anything. Prepaids are all assets. Interest receivable would be an asset. We've kind of talked about that before, haven't we? Any type of receivable is an asset. Um, when we have an investment in another company, that's an asset. We might see, get that. Revenues, cash, receivables, equipment, supplies. These are all assets. Now, we did talk about something, and I'm just going to mention. We know of one thing that's called a contra asset, accumulated depreciation. It really is not an asset per se, but it helps us offset the expenses or the, the um, asset with the depreciation we've already taken to date to give us a net amount. Okay? Can I move on? Next, liability accounts. Liability accounts are what, guys? <laughs> what is a liability account? We owe money. We owe somebody something. Accounts payable is a liability account. What else? Notes payable is a liability account. What is the difference between an account payable and a note payable? Notes usually have a written agreement. Usually it's a signed agreement that involves interest. Okay? Accounts payable are bills we owe. What else? Deferred revenue. What is deferred revenue? We owe services to somebody. Any other? To pay, any payable is a liability account. Okay? Got it? Next. Stockholders' equity accounts. What kind of accounts are in here? 
common stock. What else? Retained earnings. And there's one more. Dividends. Those consist of the stockholders' equity accounts. Next, we have something called revenue accounts. Revenue accounts are part of the what financial statement? The income statement. What are some revenue accounts? Service, Service revenue. Anything revenue, right? Mm -hmm. What? Except deferred. The word deferred lets you know it's a liability. Thank you for saying that. Sales are revenue accounts. When we sell products, sales are revenue accounts. Revenues and sales are part of the income statement. Then we have something called expense accounts. What financial statement are expense accounts in? <laughs> the income statement? Mm -hmm. What type of expense accounts do we know of? Rent expense? expense. Utilities expense? Supplies expense, what? Repairs and maintenance expense, advertising, salaries. Do you guys see a commonality here? The word expense, if it's the, the word expense is in the account, then what is it? It's an expense. How are we doing so far? Is this helpful? Yes, no. So what have we learned so far? Can you, someone just like say something and someone else say something. You don't have to raise your hand. Joe, what have we learned so far? what the assets, revenues, and expenses are. So we know assets are part of what kind of financial statement? Balance sheet. Balance sheet. Sorry. I was going to start crying. Come on, don't make... Look, I want to cry so bad, but don't make me cry, please. I'm giving y'all a hard time. Everyone around me is sick, and I'm trying to stay healthy. You know, and it's like nuts. Everyone's dropping. So, guys, if you're sick, like, just like, yeah, or go like this. Okay, so assets are part of the balance sheet. Revenues are part of what, Joe? The income statement. And, Joe, one more time. Expenses are part of what? Uh, expenses are part of the income statement, too, right? Mm -hmm. What else have we learned, guys? Liabilities are part of the balance sheet. And stockholders' equity is what? The stockholders' equity can, is, is created through the statement of stockholders' equity, which ultimately is part of the balance sheet also. What else do we know? Deferred revenue is what? A liability. What else do we know? Richard, what are you learning besides you're frustrated? Do you need to think about it a little? You're getting it, Rich? You're getting it? Does this help, guys? Now let's go on. Now, guys, I also want you to know if I call on you, it's probably because I like you. Get it? Because I'm not, my nature isn't going to be to pick on anybody around here, okay? Maybe Kirby, but that's about it. Now, we know debit means... Debit means left, and credit 
means right. Got it? What accounts have normal debit balances? Assets have normal debit balances. What else? Expenses and dividends. That means to increase assets, to increase expenses, and to increase dividends, we debit them. Right? Mm -hmm. Who has extra sheets? I left it blank on the back so you guys can write on the back too. Okay? Credit means write. What accounts are credit balances? Liabilities? Revenues? And owner's equity or stockholder's equity. And that means to increase a liability account, we credit it. To increase a revenue account, we credit it. To increase a stockholder's equity account, we credit it. Right? We also learned about, I know it's not on here, T accounts. T accounts are just a simple way for us to keep track of balances. A simple way to keep track of balances. Now, guys, what I mean by that is, and we're going we're gonna to go through this exercise, but we can create a T account that has a debit side, and a credit side. So if we create a T account such as <coughs> third bless you. If we create a T account You get the point. If we create a T account that this shows cash. Then what we're able to do is every journal entry we can post to this T account to come up with a balance at the end, right? Or we may have one that's called accounts receivable. Or we may have one that's called supplies. Or we could have one that's called what, guys? Land. Or we might have a liability. That's called accounts payable. Or we could have a liability that's called deferred revenue. <coughs> or we could have an account that's called common stock. Or we could have an account that's called retained earnings. Or we could have an account that is called service revenue. Or we could have an account that's called salaries expense. Or we could have an account
We could have an account that is called um, supplies expense. Or we could have an account that's called dividends. Or we could have an account that's called rent, rep, rent expense. Get what I'm doing here? These T accounts are really helpful because they allow us to take and record each transaction. Now let's go back. We have spent the past several weeks going through a variety of transactions. These transactions basically are events that happen in companies, aren't they? And our job as accountants is to read them, to analyze them, meaning what needs to happen and how much and when, right? And then to record them. So let's talk about some journal entries that have been pretty common, or maybe some that haven't been common. Do you know why I'm doing this, guys? Because when you get stuck, like when you have an, an exercise and you go, gosh, what do I do? <coughs> you can go back to your cheat sheet and go, well, that's right. When we did this, I did this. Okay? Instead of it feeling so overwhelming, you have a little cheat sheet that helps you come centered again. Okay? We all need those. Right? So, what's one? Issue stock. Right? So, I'm going to just show cash for 10000 I'm going to show common stock for 10000 And I'm going to show issued stock um, for 10000 cash. So that way, when you run across something and you forget, you can go back and go, I think we talked about that on our cheat, our cheat day. Okay? Got it? Another one. We purchase equipment. When we purchase equipment for cash, we would record the equipment for $30,000. We credit cash for $33,000. And we say purchased equipment for with cash. Equipment is an asset. Cash is an asset. Equipment increased. That's why we debited it. Cash decreased. That's why we credited it. Right? What if we needed to buy a building? And we bought the building putting down $30,000 and taking it out a loan for $100,000. What? We would have two credits. We would debit your building for $130,000. We would credit cash for thirty, And we would credit, I'm going to call this a notes payable right now. It could be a mortgage payable. I'm going to just say mortgage payable for a hundred. Now guys, yes, you're right, it involved two credits, but was that really hard? Do you see? You think. Analyze it. We purchased a building 130. We paid 30 cash. We took out a note for the difference. So now we did involve three accounts. But guys, don't we still, don't our debits still have to equal our credits? So I'm going to write. 
Here, I just need it. Excuse me, guys. So, purchased building for 30 cash and the rest took a mortgage. Do you guys see that these are transactions that, that involve source documents? We probably had a settlement statement showing we purchased the building, right? We have a check showing we paid 30000 cash, and we have a note with the bank, a mortgage with the bank. Do you see how we can substantiate these? Right? Got it? What if we then provided services, provided services, um, and received cash. Wouldn't we have a debit to cash for $55,000 and a credit to service revenue for $55,000? <laughs> right? What does that mean? We performed some type of of service which is why we're in business so service revenue is part of the income statement I had a client in yesterday oh my god I couldn't believe it he was like 27 years old he owns his own business and he basically is an IT guy but he also writes code and I don't really even understand what he does but oh my gosh I'm in the wrong field that's all I'll say. He makes like 30000 a month just writing code for people, and I don't really even understand it. So, like, when they want to do a research and they want to, like, show me a document that contains these words, you know, he creates the code for them to do that stuff. Total brainy guy, but he loves it. Next. Provided services on account. Wouldn't that be accounts receivable? For 42000 and service revenue, 42000 Provide services on account. So, guys, what I'm trying to help you see is when you see something that says provided services on account, that doesn't mean we got the cash, does it? It means they owe us the money. It's a receivable when we're due the money. Right? How are we doing so far? Are you guys hanging in there with me? Now, we have, we paid salaries for the two weeks. So, that's our code, and I've got salaries expense of 12000 and cash of 12000 Okay? Does that make sense? How about one of you guys help me? What are some journal entries we've been dealing with? Not adjusting journal entries, journal entries with external transactions with other people. Paid dividends. We paid dividends. Paid dividends to shareholders. And we're going to say dividends of 5000 and cash of 5000 
Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Okay, we good so far? Mm -hmm. Client, or do you call it customer, paid $10,000 in advance for services to be rendered this year. Cash, 10000 What is our credit? Deferred revenues. Why is it not just service revenues? We haven't done the service. And do you remember cash versus accrual? We only record something as a revenue when we have completed the work. Right? So in one of my classes I'm teaching, they talk about revenues. What happens like, do you guys remember when they were building 35W? Mm -hmm. You know, just a couple years. How many years did it take? 20? Probably. At least five recently, huh? How do they record those revenues? Is it, Have y'all ever thought of that? So you guys don't stay awake at night wondering, hmm, I wonder how they do that. <laughs> That's my craziness. Like, you know, so usually there's certain... Um, agreements as to once this part of this, the project is completed, then this revenue is recorded. Next, next. And they're very lengthy and involved regarding timing and, you know, so much is out of their control too. It's kind of scary. But anyway, revenues get recorded when the work is completed, right? Any others? So work has been completed. So what if we're going to say um, um, completed $5,000 of customers' work in entry above? Okay? Um, it could be, but let's, it, it could be an adjusting entry. It could be, or it can be, Yes, it's basically an adjusting entry, but let's say for now, all of a sudden we realize, hey, this is going out. We did the work. Here's the invoice. Oh, they had a deferred revenue, so we are now going to record it. So what are we going to show? Debit deferred revenues of 5000 and credit service revenue of 5000 Make sense? Good guys? <laughs> what if we purchase supplies on account? Purchased supplies on account. Supplies is debited and what's credited? Accounts payable. And I'm going to make this for 3000 Okay? What if we purchase supplies for cash? Purchase supplies for ca with cash. Or I just said purchase supplies. We know it's with cash, right? So, purchase supplies, we debit supplies of 8200 we credit cash of 8200 <laughs> We doing okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, the electric company... Money from utilities in the month, utility expense, because this is, um, we received the bill, okay? 
utility expense, 525, and utilities payable or accounts payable, 525. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you deduct cash? Is it always? I just wrote O. Oh. I didn't say paid. Did I say paid? Do you see what I'm trying to help you guys do? Understand the differences? Mm -hmm. The word above it says it's supplies. Why aren't you doing cash on supplies? Oh. So we purchase supplies. 8200 and we credit cash 8200. <laughs> Why aren't we doing supplies expense? When anyone any thoughts? It's an asset until we use it. Okay? Now um Here's another one. We hired a contractor to install um, five computers and a server. What? Well, oh, oh, I'm sorry. We hired a contractor to install five computers in service, and he sent Bill for $3,000, and we paid it. <laughs> I know, that's not good, but get the point? So what are we going to do? What? Let's just call it a repair expense for now, okay? Because, in your, again, I won't get too technical, but sometimes it can be added to the price of a good. But we're just, maybe I should have said to fix five computers, okay? <laughs> fix five computers and server, okay? So that way I'm not confusing you guys. So what are we going to debit? Repairs expense for 3000 Credit cash for, th why are we crediting cash? We paid it. Got it? Asked JD to be the advertising model for the new um, ad. Because of his hair. How much, guys? J.D., am I embarrassing you? What do we do? <laughs> do we do anything? No. Nothing. Got it? How about we paid... Utilities above. The lid was on. What else, guys? Paid utilities above. Debit accounts payable. Yeah. What are we going to debit? We debit utilities payable. Four, five, twenty-five, and we credit. Now, why don't we debit cash and credit utilities payable? Because if you debit cash, that means you're getting money. Correct. If we debit cash. We're getting money, but we're paying out cash. We're reducing money, right? 
Is this helping, guys? Now I'm going to do an adjusting entry. Um, counted goods in closet, in supplies closet, and only have $300 left in supplies. We have, where is it guys? Look, look, look. <coughs> What's it gonna be? On the 27th, so what are we gonna debit? What are we gonna credit? The account and how much? <laughs> Guys, do you see up here, we did supplies here of 3000 and had accounts payable, and then we did supplies here of 8200 and paid cash? If we have 500, 500 or 300 left, did I say? 300. How much did we use up? Eighty two hundred plus 8200 Okay, let's go down here. Let's go to our T accounts. Supplies. We had 3,000, right? And then we had 8,200. But at the end, we are being told that there's only 300 left. What does our credit need to be to supplies? 10,100? 10,900? And wouldn't that be a supplies expense of 10,900 also? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't we say supplies expense 10,900 and credit supplies of 10,900? Soy, are you with me? Does that make sense? How you guys doing? You okay? Now, Let's take it a step further. We had some beginning balances, okay? We had some beginning We had some beginning balances. We had cash beginning balance of $500. We had um, buildings, beginning balance of 20000 We had equipment, a beginning balance of 5000 Okay? What else do we have? We have common stock, a beginning balance of 30000 we have retained earnings, a beginning balance of 10000 So, do you see how I kind of drew some T accounts here? I'm going to go and put those beginning balances in my accounts. Okay? How are you guys doing? I forgot if I didn't tell you guys, but there's no yawning allowed in here. 
What? Someone researched why yawning is contagious. I still want to get that. Something to do with evolution. I've been being in the audience. I don't quite understand. Yeah. Something that Well, I never have enough oxygen. You don't have enough sleep. Oh, oh, that could be it, too. <laughs> I've heard it's stress as well. Anxiety. I was returning emails last night at 3.30, and finally someone said, why were you up at 3.30? It's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> okay, guys, so do you see these beginning balances? We are going to transfer them to some accounts. Cash, 500, building, 20,000. So we're going to go to cash. If you want to, I'm just trying to help you guys. If you want to, feel free to. If you don't want to, that's fine. This is an exercise only to help you learn. So if that will help you learn, do it. If it won't, don't do it. What? Perfect. Again, my purpose in doing this, you get why? Mm -hmm. Next, building 20,000. I'm going to take my land and make it a building. Okay. Equipment 5,000. Equipment here, 5,000. Common stock, 30,000. Look how I'm putting it on the right-hand side because it's a normal balance. Retained earnings, 10,000. Okay? Let me just see. Five, 25, 25, 5. I gotta, I gotta make this, um, 25, I gotta make this 15,000 to make my balance. So I'm making my cash 15,000. Ah! Fifteen thousand is what I'm going to do. Fifteen thousand. I'm just trying to get my debits to equal my credits. Remember? Okay. So, remember, I'm adding my beginning balances. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to take these various transactions, and we're going to record them. Okay? Transactions, normal daily transactions. We increased issued stock for cash of 10,000. Do you see here? We debited our cash for 10,000. We credited common stock for 10,000. So we're going to show a debit in cash for 10,000, a credit in common stock for 10,000. Right? Mm -hmm. Next, equipment increased 33,000, cash decreased 33,000. Equipment increased 33,000, cash decreased. 33,000. Okay? Next. Building increased 130,000. Cash decreased 30,000. Building increased 130. Cash decreased 30. And our mortgage payable
mortgage payable increased a hundred thousand. Does that make sense? Am I losing you? Sure. Is that okay, guys? Next. Cash increased fifty five thousand. Service revenue increased fifty five thousand. Cash fifty five thousand. Service revenue fifty five thousand. Got it? Next, accounts receivable increased forty two thousand. Service revenue forty two thousand. Got it? Next, salaries expense twelve thousand, cash twelve thousand. Cash twelve thousand, salaries expense twelve thousand. Making sense? Next, dividends five thousand, cash five thousand. Dividends five, cash five. What we debit, we have to equally credit, don't don't we? Next, cash ten thousand, deferred revenues ten thousand. Cash ten thousand, deferred revenues ten thousand. Next. Deferred revenues, a debit for five thousand. Service revenues, five thousand. Okay. Next, supplies of three thousand. Accounts payable of three thousand. Supplies of three thousand. Oh, I already have that in there. Accounts payable of three thousand. What I'm doing here is just posting them to the gen to the different T accounts. Supplies of eighty two hundred, cash of eighty two hundred. And I have my supplies right there. Then utilities expense of five twenty five, utilities payable of five twenty five. I don't have a utilities payable, so Next, repairs expense of three thousand, cash of three thousand. I have so many cash, I got to keep inserting cash of three thousand, utilities expense.
I'll just put utilities expense. Uh, how much did I say? 3000 Next. JD. Nothing. <laughs> Utilities payable, 525 Cash, 525 Cash, 525 We debit utilities payable, 525 Okay. Next, supplies expense ten thousand nine hundred, credit supplies ten thousand nine hundred. Supplies expense, we debit that ten thousand nine hundred. Okay, are we good? I think we're done there, right? So, basically, <coughs> you're going to take each account and you're going to balance it out. So, basically, in, in assets, you're going to total your debits. You're going to total your credits and you're going to subtract your credits from your debits. And I hope I didn't screw this up because I have too many cash outs. 25. So, yes. I am. Utilities payable. Util. Oh, why did I say 3,000? Thank you. And then I put the three in there. Thank you. Then I would have been cussing myself because I wouldn't have figured out where I'm off. You see how easy it is to screw it up? Was that staged? It wasn't staged. So you're going to total your debits, total your credits, and get the balances. Okay? Did I have a 3,000 utilities expense for cash? So, guys, I screwed this up. I need to show this a beginning balance of 25 instead of building will be 10. I'm just trying to make me balance here. Otherwise, I'm not going to balance. So basically, the goal is you want to total your debits, you want to total your credits, and the net is going to be your balance, okay? 82.75. And guys, I just, just so you know, I switched my beginning balance of cash from 15 to 25 and lowered my building down to 10 so I could balance. So our accounts receivable has a balance of... 42,000, supplies 300, our building 140,000, our service revenues has a balance of 10,200. See what I'm doing here?
How are y'all doing so far? Is it making sense? Mm -hmm. Now, to create our adjusted trial balance, remember what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to go back and just show one side for debits, one side for credits. So we're going to take our cash balance, and we're going to have a balance of 8275 Next, we're going to take our accounts receivable with a balance of 42000 Next, we're going to take our supplies with a balance of 300 Next, our building creating an adjusted trial balance with a balance of 140000 Do I have any more assets? Yes, I do. I have equipment with a balance of 38000 Any more assets, guys? I think I have them all. Now I do my payables. I do an accounts payable with a balance, a credit balance of 3000 I do my deferred revenue with a credit balance of 5000 I do my mortgage payable with a credit balance of 100000 My utilities payable is zero, right? Do I have, now I need to do my stockholder's equity. My retained earnings has a credit balance of 10,000. One sec. My common stock has a credit balance of 40,000. My dividends has a debit balance of 5,000. Then I'm going to do my income statement accounts. My service revenue has a credit balance of 102. My expenses, supplies expense, has a debit balance of 10,900. My utilities expense has a debit balance of how much, guys? Uh, 3525 What else do I have? Supplies expense, I have salaries expense <laughs> has a balance of 12,000 Any other expenses? Do you think we have it all? So let me go over here. So our debits You see how the debit and the credit zero out? There's nothing to add because utilities is a credit and a debit, it equals zero. So would it be wrong if you did that? Not at all. So I'll add that in here. I could add, um, I'm sorry, so I can add... Just trying to 
let me add a utilities payable, guys, okay? Okay? Yes. Yes. Remember, expenses are temporary accounts that are part of the income statement. So all expenses are the very last ones. No, the expenses can all go together. Now, so the revenue goes first, the expenses go next, but remember, the order is always assets, then liabilities, then owner's equity, stockholder's equity, then revenue and expense. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. You answered my question. Okay. That is our adjusted trial balance. Does that make sense how we flow it all together? One sec. Do you see from this adjusted trial balance that we can, the first thing we're going to do is the income statement, right? The income statement will be from these items. You get my point. I'm just trying to. And the bottom line is net income. Does that make sense? Then the next is the statement of stockholders' equity, isn't it? We're going to begin with the beginning balances, beginning balances of common stock, retained earnings, and a total. So we begin common stock of 40. No, what did we? 30. Retained earnings, 10. The total is 40. We add in, we add, increased our common stock this year by 10. Retained earnings, we're going to add net income of 75, 575, right? We paid out dividends of how much? 5000 wasn't it? So our ending balance is better balance. Do we balance? <laughs> Am I making sense what we're doing, guys? Mm -hmm. Then what is the last thing we're going to do? Our balance sheet. Our balance sheet will start with our cash of up here. All of these are going to be the first items we're going to take. I don't know why that didn't do. But if we take these accounts, here, let me just write them in. Can someone help me remember those? Cash is what? 82.75. What's the next one? Accounts receivable is what? 42,000. What's next? Supplies is 300. 
building 140. Building 140. What's next? Equipment. 38. What's next? Okay, so that's my total assets. Okay? My total assets are 228575. Now let's do our liabilities. Liabilities are what? Counts payable. What? 3,000. What's next? Deferred revenue. Get it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So our liabilities are a total of 108. Our stockholders' equity, we know what that is. From above, we've got our common stock of 40 and our retained earnings of 80, 575. So we should have So this is going to be total liabilities and stockholders' equity. Two twenty-eight five seventy-five, and it totals our assets. Two twenty-eight five seventy-five. Is this helpful? Once we then perform. The financial statements, we now need to zero out all temporary accounts. So we need to begin by zeroing out dividends. Remember, dividends ultimately get zeroed out to begin the next year. So we will go back here. I'm going to call this closing entries. We will, retained earnings is our debit for 5000 and our credit is to dividends, right? For 5000 What else are we going to zero out? Revenue, we debit service revenue of how much? One oh two and we credit retained earnings for one oh two. This is to close dividends to retained earnings. This one is to close revenues to retained earnings. Now let's close out our expense accounts. To close out expense accounts, do we debit them or credit them? To zero them out. We credit them. So we have supplies, utilities, and salaries. So we have the supplies, utilities, and salaries. Didn't take it. So our supplies expense, well, we're going to debit it to retained earnings. Supplies expense is what? What's the amount? Anyone? Does anyone know the balance to supplies expense? Ten thousand nine hundred. Utilities thirty five twenty five. Thirty-five twenty-five, and there's one more. Salaries expense twelve thousand. And we would debit retained earnings for how much? Mm-hmm. Fifteen fifteen five twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-six, four twenty-five. 
should be. And so basically our closing trial balance will have everything just like this, or excuse me, it's going to look like this account, but the difference is the service revenue went into the retained earnings. And we should be able to get rid of these accounts. I'm doing something wrong. So my retained earnings didn't it so it should be the retained earnings started at ten equal this plus my net income eighty eight eighty five five seventy five. Oh I'm off some oh minus my dividends. So $80,575. Okay? So ultimately, the closing trial balance, do you see how we're going to balance? We're just getting rid of all the temporary accounts. This is the closing trial balance so we can start fresh the next period. Yes? Exactly. They all get zeroed out into retained earnings. Remember in Chapter 1 how we talked about eventually our income and expenses flow back into retained earnings? Do you see how it's doing it now? So ultimately, those get closed out every period and they get added or subtracted to our retained earnings so we can begin again. So guys, basically what I'm going to do